Thanks for staying with us. Now, domestic abuse can be defined as an intentional and persistent abuse of, of anyone in the home in a way that causes pain, distress, or injury. Domestic violence is an act of, of force in a home that causes physical, psychological, and emotional pain, and it infringes on the right of the person. Now, apart from general laws against violence, um, specific laws like Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act or Protection Against Domestic Violence Law have been put in place to prevent domestic violence. Now, with all of these in place, we still see governors, yes, pastors, family members, in some cases, the victims themselves prevent justice when there is physical abuse, especially in marriages. And we're asking why. Let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. So I'm going to bring in our guest in a mm. few minutes. Um, I just wanted to hear your initial thoughts. You are a lawyer. Our guest is a lawyer. Olamide is supposed to be a lawyer as well. So I was supposed to be, you know, the only non-lawyer. I hope Olamide will be able to make it before the show is over because the traffic is really bad. But let me hear your thoughts. Because when I was reading this, you know, I tried to go into the mind of you guys, you know, the legal people and all of that. First of all, why is it so that there are laws against domestic violence and yet people don't take advantage of those laws. They just go about saying, oh, it's a family matter. I hear so many things, and it's so tiring, mm -hmm. you know. Why is that so? Talking about why people refuse to take legal actions, I think that's, that's not really looking at it from the legal perspective. Now, it's not looking at it from society's mm -hmm. values, well, that's true. how society looks at it. And, you know, it's the same thing. If you have it, you know, for example, from what you read, we know that domestic violence is not just physical abuse. It could be emotional abuse. It could be psychological abuse. And it's not necessarily between spouses. Mm -hmm. It could be a parent inflicting some violence Pain on, on the their child. child. Yes. So it could be that way. So then you find that people are going through this, but then there's this society, there's this blood is thicker than water. There's the sentiment of it's actually your you know, your child's father. You, do you want your child's father to go to jail? Mm -hmm. Do you want him to, you know, and there's this thing about you take it to court, it becomes open. Mm. So people usually don't like that stigma, the way the society looks at it. And perhaps you go to people and ask for advice and the same things they tell you is, you know, just be patient, just take it easy, you know, just things like that. So I think it's the society mm. that puts that that burden on people and um, what, what we can do and what we've continued to do is to actually and thankfully our guest also runs an NGO apart from that she's a lawyer so it's continue to sensitize the public to help them to find out that oh it doesn't have to be this way there are legal aspects to this there's a way to t handle this matter mm -hmm. you can even sue s in a civil matter not necessarily mm -hmm. just a criminal matter you can actually sue for damages and things like that so I think that's what some NGOs are doing. That's what the government is doing. I liked your intro. You mm. already captured. You say you're not a lawyer. And you captured someone. Oh yes, you I already did my captured research. the VAP <laughs> Act, and then you talked about Lagos own law mm. as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, let me know because I'm not the, <laughs> I'm not the guest. <laughs> yeah. You know, she is the guest. Let, oh, let me throw to Omaomi. Oh, so yeah, Omaomi. All right. So Omaomi Ogunrontimi is the founder of Gender Mobile Initiative and also serves as the deputy head of the sectorial committee on Women and Gender, AU um, ECOSOC, Nigeria. Her recent work is focused on driving systemic changes, normative and cultural shifts through viable policy intention and technology adoption to address sexual harassment in tertiary education institutions. Thank you so much for joining us. She's joined us all the way from Abuja. Thank you, Amaomi. Thank you for having me. It's an absolute pleasure to be here tonight. Yeah, we are so happy to have you. So you were listening in on our conversation, right? Um, uh, when I was going through, you know, I'm not a lawyer, so, but I tried to read through, I mean, you know, um, some documents online to see what are the things that are available to people. Now, why we're deciding to talk about this is because of the recent, the very recent video that surfaced of the young woman that we saw so much blood on her face doing a video and saying she was tired. Then all of a sudden, um, 
some magical um, governor comes to say, you know what, I have Set reconciled you. both of you. For me, I just got so tired and I was wondering, how does this even happen, right? So why, where are the, where are the laws on, on the ground? Because I know abroad, if you do not borrow yourself sense, you know, to, to go the legal route, the, the law itself, the government itself, they will come after cases like that, you know, to, to come and stand. I, I don't know. Uh, or maybe, I, maybe I'm even wrong. Even if your neighbor finds that you yes, are doing Yes, they will such call the police on your behalf. Call, on your behalf. Yeah. So, um, allow me, I don't know. Why is this so that people just cannot go to legal, um, what's it called, um, help when it comes to violence, especially domestic violence? Thank you so much for that question. And I think I really like this line of conversation. And um, I think it's a line of conversation that we really need to advance and hold more. So, um, you know, um, Timmy did some factors, and I want to say that a lot of people do not explore our legal framework because of social, economic, you know, religious factors. We have lots of laws on paper. As a matter of fact, I think Nigeria has a demonstrated history of signing international treaties, protocols, you know, and what have you. And some of those laws we have actually domesticated. Look at the Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. Look at the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act of 2015. I think that law was signed, that, that, act, that bill was signed into an act um, in May 2015. And you know, there has been a lot of momentum around that act, also advocacy at the level of state governments that you know, such um, act of parliament should be located or should be located. Unfortunately, you know, 23 states are yet to you know, um, locally adopt that um, act as a state law, and that's a major gap for us. But to say that even in states that have adopted this act as a law, you know, are people exploring the provisions available in this piece of legislation. It's a pragmatic legislation, you know. And I always say that it's the most revolutionary piece of legal framework that we have. The first piece of legislation to really expand conversations or even the scope of Nigerian criminal jurisprudence. And this we thought, you know, when we had the act, we thought an hand was going to come automatically to patterns of domestic violence and even sexual violence. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, you know, you cannot take away the social economic factors away from the legal factors. Mm -hmm. When a society where women are naturally relegated, where, you know, the success of a woman is measured by how much, mm -hmm. how, how, how she's able to hold her family and her marriage mm -hmm. together. So when you see things like this, you know, it further enables the culture of silence because women too also want to give an impression that all is well. Mm. And that's why you see a situation where a governor is reconciling um, two parties who, or, or is reconciling a party that has committed a criminal act. I've never seen it in the history of Nigeria where you employ or you deploy alternative dispute resolution mechanism, you know, to, to address crime. It's, not, it's never done. And the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act is very clear is explicit on you know whether or not domestic violence is a crime and of course the penalty if found liable or if convicted mm. so these laws are there for us unfortunately there are other barriers that we really need to dim the light and yeah, yeah sorry mommy maybe I, because as you're talking now it's just occurring to me are we even seeing beating up your wife for instance do we even see that is a crime or we just think, oh, she made me upset, and that's why I beat her. Maybe we're not seeing it now, because, and that was why I took our quote, you know. When you take out the domestic part from the, violence from, the, violence. from the violence, violence is violence. It's not, you know, so are we, is it that we are, we are refusing to see this as a crime? We are just seeing it that, no, somebody angered me and I beat up the person. Is that the problem? It's part of the problem. So over the years also, we have also had conversations along those lines. You know, there are some part of the country or there are some people who think that beating one's wife is the way of, you know, correcting someone who has heard, you know. And of course, people do not see this as an issue that should even be taken to court. So that's why domestic violence is always regarded as a private affair. It's domestic, hmm. you know, it remains in the family and it should stay as a family issue. We should keep it within the family. But interestingly, I'm also excited to share that 
you know, the opening of the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act states that the act aims to eliminate violence in both public and private spaces. Mm -hmm. This is very key. I think when we have a piece of legislation, we need to actually elevate some components of, 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 of those lines for people to really know. Because also, a lot of people are not aware that these laws are on paper. You know, um, recently I was having a conversation with a friend also about this domestic violence case that went and got on social media. And before we knew what was happening, you know, we saw that the governor was already reconciling both parties. And, you know, what comes to mind is, will the next woman who is violated come out, you know, to talk about this issue? Also, civil society organizations that are working to provide support on the field. These are some of the examples that, you know, get some of us really worried. You take on a case, you get halfway into the case, and the victim or the survivor comes to tell you that, you know what, I'm no longer interested. I want to settle, I wanna settle out of court. Mm -hmm. It could be really frustrating. And of course, the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act even also says, in terms of getting some order in court, you know, um, you actually need the consent of the victim mm -hmm. to be able to get an order such as the protection order, you know. So these are some of the issues that I think we really need to dim the light. Domestic violence has been normalized in some setup. We need to talk more about it. We need to we need to raise the awareness. Women need to understand that domestic violence is a crime and that you actually need to even stay alive to be the mother of your kids. I think we need to also talk about that more. Yeah. And also to say that marriage oh, okay. should never be a parameter to measure the success of a woman. Can you come I back again on that? Because we lost your audio for two seconds. You said marriage is what? Marriage should never be the parameters mm -hmm. to measure the success of a woman. And also, I think that this exerts some kind of societal pressure on women, that they try to tolerate, endure what they shouldn't ever endure, mm -hmm. all in the name of keeping their home together. Hmm. All right. Omomi, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on this. So when you mentioned that sometimes you're fighting for someone and then the person says, you know what, I'm not interested, it resonates with me. I remember this particular time when I was, I saw somebody taking a bribe on the road. I saw a police officer taking a bribe on the road. And you know, I was, I was back in university and I thought this was wrong. So I came down and I said, this is wrong. And I, I, I said, no, we need to stop this. We need to do this. We need to do that. And I told the driver, pack, we're going to get to this. You took the bribe. I was, it was very bold, such, such an audacious scene at, at that point. And you know what? I looked at the driver and I said, okay, you know what? Calm down. He said he's going to take us to the station. Let's go. I was ready. <laughs> and then the driver says, madam, please be going. I'm like, <laughs> I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to put an end to this. And then he says, no, 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 you are complicating issues for us. You know, be going for some reason. So I can understand when you're trying to help somebody, an organization is trying to help somebody, and the person says, halfway into the case, the person says, I'll no longer be going further. I understand that, and uh, you know, that, that can be really painful. Mm -hmm. Now, I would like you to speak to what a perpetrator, or not, not a perpetrator now, a victim can do when he or she is facing these issues. But first of all, can you start with, because that was one of the issues I was discussing with Uwa, how that domestic violence, when we say domestic violence, what comes to mind is the husband is beating the wife. How that it is wider and what scope it covers, you know, particularly for people who are listening, who have no idea, have not seen this law, they don't have any legal background. Could you make it as simple as possible? What, who can, you know, come under this domestic violence? What does domestic violence mean? Who is under this, you know, word domestic violence? And if you're in such a situation, what can you do? Now, what closely related to that also is the question about, you know, there are some young people, um, for example, a child who is dependent on a parent or a spouse who is dependent on the other spouse who feels that, oh, if I report this or if I institute an action, maybe this person will come after me or will hurt me. And that's a fear. That, that, that's a good, you know, it's really a bad thing thinking that, mm. oh, maybe this person wouldn't give me money any longer because I'm economically dependent, dependent. on this person. Mm -hmm. So I would like you to also You've talk. You've asked a lot of questions. Yes. <laughs> No, I know among me, you know, she, I, I feel like you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. I just want you to answer. If you miss anything, I'll come back again with it. You know, but starting with who does domestic violence, who does this word domestic violence, who does it cover? And how right. can victims go about this, go about getting 
some help. Um, help. Yes, legally. Thank you. Right. Yeah, and um, thanks for that, um, Timmy. So um, I think that if we're talking about the scope of domestic violence, you know, who are the parties concerned? Who are those affected? Who can get? Who are those that can get cover under the law? I think I would have to defer to the law itself. Mm -hmm. So the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act defines domestic violence as any act of violence inflicted on a person in a domestic relationship. So and. Also, we've seen cases in court where the court has had to interpret that to mean relationships within a family setting. Mm -hmm. So that's why, you know, when you talk about domestic violence, you talk about intimate partner violence. And also within the home, of course, it could be violence ensuing between parents and children, which is an aspect that we really don't beam to like. Because we feel that normally, you know, parents have the right to, the moral right to sanction their children. Whichever way they choose to sanction sanction the child is their is their prerogative, you know. So I think this is also an aspect that we need to talk about mm. more. But talking about you know what victims can do under the law, you know there are a lot of remedies. Interestingly, in recent time, we've also come to understand that you know um, the the concept of justice has assumed different aspiration, you know, for different people. For some people, justice means the perpetrator has to serve a jail term. For some people, justice means, you know what, I want to talk about this, I need some closure, and I'm going to speak about it on social media. And, you know, for some people, I want to prosecute and ensure that, you know, the perpetrator serves a jail term. So to say that justice now means different things to different people also has been covered by the law. So the VAP Act provides medical support. The VAP Act actually states that a victim of domestic violence or sexual violence is entitled to medical support, material support, psychosocial support, you know, trauma counseling, and some other relevant support. And this range, this range of support system are supposed to be provided by governmental and non-governmental organization. Mm -hmm. But the question is, you know, in Nigeria today, how many victims of domestic violence have been able to access this range of support okay. or this range of uh, sources? Absolutely. So that you know, is a... So, okay. Um, so Maomi, I, I hear you, and I, I'm yeah. happy that you said that. So we are going to take a very short break. When we return, we'll pick up from where you stop. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.